Yellow, how are you guys doing? My name is Rob of Rule of Two Review and welcome back. So what I wanted to do today was continue the conversation a little bit from yesterday's conversation and the big event recently, which was the Game Awards, a surprisingly good show. And if you had a chance to check out my sort of review and reaction and breakdown, you know that that's how I feel. I thought it was actually really darn fun and really entertaining and had some great moments and some of the awards I thought were presented in an interesting way. And overall, the whole thing just felt pretty awesome. And considering it had been so rocky since the show was first created by Jeff Keighley and we've seen it year after year be really awkward and cringy and strange in moments, but slowly start to get more interesting in some ways, I think it all culminated in a really solid show this year, 2017. Now, of course, through that, for myself and for Rule of Two Review being so primarily Nintendo and Switch focused, of course, I was looking forward to any surprises and reveals and new games or appearances from Nintendo folk that we might see at the show. And luckily, we got a few fantastic huge moments. Again, as I did discuss on my reaction breakdown sort of video. And that's what I wanted to do was sort of just make a little bit more of a small conversation around what happened and what Nintendo showed us and what I think it meant that they were there and present it did the couple of things that they did. Now, to be fair, and to give credit where credit is due, it's not like this is the first and only time Nintendo has been present at the Game Awards, nor is it the first time that they've had some really big surprise key moments. Obviously, the big and very notable one was the reveal of Zelda gameplay. In 2014, I want to say that was when we didn't expect it. It was like the last thing they did. Reggie was there, and it turns out that we had... Aonuma and Miyamoto sitting on a couch playing the Wii U version of Zelda back when it was like the first time we'd seen anything gameplay gameplay wise it gave us the first glimpse of what it was like to truly play that game and it was really fascinating and exciting they lied to us about the release date of that and Star Fox Zero at the time if you guys remember as well that being said, it was still great to see, and so we had seen that the Game of Wards was willing to acknowledge and welcome Nintendo into the fold, Nintendo was willing to be a part of the show, and that is really great, and that's what leads us to what happened just the other night, and I don't really want to make this any more about the Game Awards itself, it's really less about that, and more about what Nintendo did. The big, awesome thing, of course, was the reveal of Bayonetta 3. And the fact that they're bringing, of course, Bayonetta's 1 and 2 over to the Switch as well. So this is huge stuff. That was, that was monumental. And I don't want to retread too much of what I did discuss on my breakdown and recap of the Game Awards. Because I did spend a couple of minutes gushing about Bayonetta 3 and how cool it was. But to go into it a little bit. I mean, how exciting is it, you guys, to have a Bayonetta 3 confirmed? It was like that weird dream third-party relationship perfect thing that we all just wanted to see happen again. I mean... When it happened with the, not the, okay, when it happened the first time with the second Bayonetta game, that was really huge and really crazy and something that no one saw coming back at that Wii U reveal event or like that, that final press conference Nintendo held specifically about the Wii U. And one of the things they showed was a very similar trailer to the one we saw the other night. That was really just a couple of quick glimpses and then the, the confirmation that Bayonetta 2 is a game, that it was then coming to the Wii U, and that it was going to be exclusive to the Wii U. And then of course in the lead up to the Switch, a lot of people started to talk about these rumors and ideas of some of the best Wii U games being ported over to the Switch because a lot of folks will know and recognize, obviously myself included, that even though the Wii U was basically a failure, and didn't people didn't really love it that there's a really solid fantastic library across the board that is for lack of a better word trapped on that console so it got really exciting for a lot of us to think about well maybe nintendo would bring some of those games over like a smash brothers or a mario kart or a xenoblade and one of the first games i ever brought up was bayonetta 2 bring that stuff over and so now nintendo is doing that in february we get bayonetta's one and two on the switch that is going to be so super cool. Cannot wait to buy those games. It'll be my second time buying Bayonetta 2 and my third time buying Bayonetta 1. Actually, technically fourth, but there's a weird thing where I bought the PS3 version and it was so bad I traded it or returned it to get the 360 version. So regardless, basically three times I've bought the first game. And that's really great. And Bayonetta 3 coming to the Switch and being that thing we all wanted to see. Would they do it again with this new generation? Would they make a Bayonetta 3? Would Nintendo and Platinum secure it as an exclusive to the Switch? That would be so great. And I believed it could happen for a long time. And sure enough, that's what's happening. And what I like about this, beyond the fact that it's just badass that the game exists and is coming to the Switch exclusive, 
is that it shows that Nintendo is still keeping some surprises under its sleeve. And it does have some things to shock us still. And they are still working to have a really solid upcoming lineup. And that makes me excited because as I've discussed before, 2017 has been so fantastic. And a lot of people have been worried that maybe Nintendo shot their wad too early. And so many good games coming out, most of them first party, really having them in such quick succession in the first year of their new console, does that mean they have enough to complete and fill out the next couple of years after that? Now, for the most part, I felt that they probably do. I mean, I've talked about so many times all the first party games I think could come out in 2018 and in 2019, as well as the fact that I expect third party games to mostly continue for the Switch in 2018. And obviously by 2019, I think a lot of the uh, industry and companies will have caught up to the success in this, of the Switch and hopefully be releasing more of those games in 2019. But again, there are those naysayers or those people who are questionable about it. So we know of a couple of things that are peppering out 2018. And then we have those games that we're not sure about. Metroid and Pokemon, are they 2018? Are they 2019? No one really knows. We all have theories and speculations. But with that worry and concern from a lot of people, that again, I admit, isn't totally unfounded, that maybe there are, they aren't going to have enough stuff to really show us and to present to us in 2018, that maybe that's going to be this blank, barren year. Even though Bayonetta 3 is not confirmed for 2018 yet, there is no date. And I think it is very likely it is actually a 2019 game. We still have to keep open the idea that maybe this game has been being worked on for long enough that by the time they give us more details and gameplay and an official date sometime in 2018, maybe they confirm it's going to be in the holiday. You know, how cool would it be for that game to actually make it out next year? And so I don't think that we necessarily have to worry. This is showing us the same continued strong and confident and surprise-filled Nintendo that we've been seeing in this Nintendo Switch era. I feel like in previous years we might have seen a Nintendo that was a little bit more bashful and operating under some of those older sort of modes that they have done in the past, you know? Where they're not willing to be so brazen and forthcoming with their information and their games and their projects that they're working on, even if they're great, amazing things that they should be putting out there like crazy. Typically, Nintendo maybe wouldn't do that, and they wouldn't show up at a Game Awards with such a big surprise announcement right in that end of that first year of their brand new console. They'd want to wait and get a little bit closer to it with a Nintendo Direct or an E3 in that second year, which I do think we're going to see a lot of that stuff as well. But this shows that they're not playing that way, and they've been operating this way with these surprises and all these big announcements, and they're willing to shock us and talk about the promise of the future games more and more in the Switch era, and they did it, and they did it with not even a first-party title. They're willing to show, hey, not only do we have an amazing game to show you, we want to surprise you and shock you at an industry event, not a Nintendo event, but an industry event. We're also going to show you that it's exclusive, and we're going to show you that it is another third-party game. And this franchise that we have worked really hard to start to brand alongside of the Nintendo name, we're doing it again. We're continuing that relationship. We're continuing the branding of Bayonetta and Nintendo being basically synonymous with each other. And with the amazing reviews and solid sales that those games have gotten in the past, we know we can maybe probably expect the best Bayonetta yet. And when you look at all the perfect tens Bayonetta 2 got, that's huge. So again, I am probably making this a little bit more focused specifically on Bayonetta more than I really mean to. As much as I do just want to talk about Bayonetta and how great it is, it's more what it represents as a game, as a surprise, as an exclusive, as an end of 2017 reveal, and as a third party game. All those things together, all these things are showing us Nintendo is definitely not done with surprises. And I know a lot of us believe that, but some people are starting to maybe worry about that. And I'll reiterate one last time here near the end of the video. It's not crazy to have that concern. So I'm not trying to say, oh, if you question Nintendo, you're nuts because Nintendo's perfect always. And they never mess up and they never go through droughts of games. Obviously, that stuff isn't true. And Nintendo does make mistakes all the time. And we've had too many droughts and too many issues from them where they've messed things up and the gamers had to pay for it with not a lot of great stuff to play. So coming off of this great year, if you have some trepidation about 2018, that's fine. I don't blame you, but I think it, it would be nice if I could maybe help steer your attention and focus it back on some of this good stuff that's happening, which is what I think showing up at the Game Awards and having a big third-party exclusive announcement and reveal the way that they and Reggie did it 
really goes a long way to show that Nintendo's got a lot to do. We're going to get a lot of directs in 2018, just like we always do. We can expect surprises. There are games we haven't heard about that will be announced and revealed in 2018. I believe it 100%. I believe we will get both Nintendo franchises in that way, and we will get more third-party franchises in that way as well. So we should be excited. And man, if they knock out two E3s in a row, oh, they haven't done that in a really long time, you guys. So... They usually go on like this staggered thing where they've got a great E3, then they have a garbage E3, then they have a great E3, then they have a garbage E3. I think 2017 was a great E3, so I want to see another great E3. And this confident Nintendo with all the surprises and the games that we want to play and the third parties are coming on board, I think that same Nintendo is going to carry us into E3 and give us some really good stuff. And to me, Bayonetta is that first sign, end of 2017, beginning of 2018, it's the first sign of that period that that's probably going to happen next year. So that's pretty much my thoughts on this. Again, I really focused this more on Bayonetta than I think I meant to. And like I was saying a couple minutes ago, it really was about what Bayonetta represents more than just the title itself. So, I mean, I guess, you know, forgive me for getting so sidetracked with that, but I'm also just so damned excited about Bayonetta 3. I mean, who isn't excited about Bayonetta 3? I mean, I think that that is going to be one of those many games that continues to sell the Switch to so many people. And I just love this modern era switch age nintendo it feels so good after the wii u years which again i love the wii year man scout's honor i love the wii u it really was a good console but that failure in that dark period and all those issues with third parties it just it really sucked it sucked for a lot of us man and you know we stuck it out as nintendo fans or at least some of us did i like to think that i did and so it's good to see nintendo back on top where they belong and yeah let's get excited for bayonetta 3 Let's see if we can really expect great things from Nintendo. Will Nintendo deliver? I mean, I'm putting my faith in them. That's what this video is about, is me telling you Rob has faith. Hopefully, you guys have faith as well. So now Nintendo has to deliver. Otherwise, we're all going to have egg on our face, and we're going to feel pretty sheepish, especially me with a YouTube channel and an audience to talk to who's like, yeah, don't worry. It's going to be great. Nintendo's got all the games coming. 2018 is going to be awesome. And then if they don't do it, I'm going to be like, oh, but what's over this way? So yeah, anyway, just having fun. Uh, that's what's up. So what do you guys think about Nintendo 2018, Bayonetta 3, their surprise at the Game Awards, all this fun stuff. Please, of course, discuss it below as always. This is Rob of Rule of Two Review. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I will catch you next time on another video.